Hello again, lads and ladies. Brad the Guitologist here. On a recent trip to the Dallas Guitar Show, I ran across a line of vintage electric guitars I either never knew existed or had forgotten altogether existed. The Custom K200 line. I had this video clip left over from my longer video of the event and decided these obscure and rare guitars deserved a bit of a deeper look. Okay, so this is a custom, and this was made in the Chanute factory, the same factory as the as the amps. And I had no clue they ever did anything like this. You said the fellow over yonder has? He's got one. The pickups are made by Diarmin, yeah. same as early Gretches. Right. And he's got another one right there. Encore Music has another one. It's just on the other side of this. Uh, this head. Okay. I like it. My son, he's like... The story of custom began in 1964 when Bud Ross began producing solid state amplifiers with the signature tuck and roll coverings in Chanute, Kansas. Along about 1966, so the story goes, Ross designed a guitar that was to be manufactured by the Holman Woodell Guitar Company, which had a factory just down the road in Neodicia, Kansas. Lasting from only 1965 to 1968, the Holman Woodell factory is probably best remembered for their wildly shaped Wurlitzer branded guitars, which consisted of three models, the Cougar, the Wildcat, and the futuristic George Jetson-esque Gemini. After the Wurlitzer contract fell through in 1967, the Holman factory started producing a line of guitars with the Holman name on them. These were made in very limited quantities and are almost never seen today. The chief designer for the Holman made guitars was a man named Doyle Redding. After the collapse of the Wurlitzer contract, sales declined at Holman, so Redding went to work for Custom just up the road in Chanute. There he designed the K200 guitar lineup with its Rickenbacker-like cat's eye sound hole and body shape. These guitars also seemed very Mose Wright inspired with their zero fret and metal nut. The fret markers were unusual also and depending on the exact model, could contain as many as four dot inlays on the same fret space. Like the Holman Woodell guitars before them, the custom guitar line was very short-lived, lasting only from 1967 to 1969. The quality is very high, and these were by no stretch of the imagination beginner or budget guitars. Bud Ross himself speculated that as few as two to 3,000 custom guitars were ever made in total, while others have estimated that likely even less than that were made. So the odds of seeing two custom K200 guitars from this era in a guitar show mere feet from one another is very low, and probably a happy accident that will never happen again. I hope you've enjoyed this short jaunt into the history of Kansas-made guitars. Be sure to check out these other videos if you like guitar content such as this. And for now, we'll see y'all later.